This video is sponsored by Squarespace. On December 23rd, Krita dropped a big old Christmas gift down our chimneys with the release of Krita 5.0. This has been years in the making, so let's check it out and see what's new. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. People like you and your cousin Jeff. We both know Jeff's got talent. He just needs to believe in himself. Krita is a free open source drawing application for Windows and Macs and Linux and even Android, but that's in beta and it's still a little bit iffy. I think it's also available for Chromebooks now too. Whenever I talk about Krita, I get comments from folks saying, yo, Krita's not free, it costs monkey, bro. I don't know why it's a paid app when you go to the Microsoft store, but you can go to krita.org and you can download it for free even if you don't have any monkey. Bro. Since it is open source, it is developed by a very hardworking team that isn't working for a lot of money and oftentimes are volunteering their time and talents, so a little donation will go a long way. All right, features. There is so much here. Interface tweaks. You can now rotate things like rectangles and ellipses while you're making them. You can drag and drop colors to fill like you can on Procreate. They've added Docker locks. So many things. I can't dive in on every single detail that they have here. So I'm gonna be taking like the 20,000 foot view, looking at the big things. Of course, big is relative. These are the things that are big to me. So the biggest changes here, and in many ways, the best changes are what's happening under the hood. Maybe these aren't new features per se, but they're really good additions or adaptations that improve the overall performance of Krita. These are the types of behind the scenes things that make Krita more stable. Maybe it's gonna make it faster here and there, and it gives them a better base to build on moving forward. For example, Krita's resource folder isn't hard coded to a single location anymore, but it can be configured now. So that's not really an exciting thing to talk about here, but that little change let them do a lot of other things. They can support more resource libraries. They were able to build a brand new resource manager on top of that. The way Krita handles things like brushes, gradients, palettes, as well as tagging has been completely revamped. This new system should be much faster, it uses less memory, and in general is going to be more stable. One of the things that's always kept me in Clip Studio or in Photoshop, whether I'm on a Mac or on Windows, is that Krita always felt a step or two slower than a lot of the other drawing apps out there. And so when using this, I can feel the difference that these new changes have made. This app definitely feels snappier. They've also added support for things like My Paint brushes. Now My Paint is another open source painting app out there that's pretty darn good. Although it's a little bit too laggy for my taste, which is part of the reason why I've kind of always stayed away from it. It's also not as fully featured as Krita, but it tries to do a lot of interesting things with their brushes and replicating natural media with those brushes. For a while, there's been a plugin that supports these brushes for Krita, but now it's native. So you can import all those my paint brushes and go to town. Also, the new smudge brush is better now. It should be less blurry and more smudgy. Subtle difference, but important here. Gradients, they've they've been improved. Now this is something I've never used in Krita. What, I just haven't had the chance. So I don't really have a good frame of reference for what they used to look like, but jumping in, playing around, yeah, these are some nice looking gradients. There's no banding, yeah, it's a good gambit, so yay. They've also changed the UI on gradients a little bit so it can do some more things and be a little bit more flexible, so that's cool. They've made some big updates to animation as well. Gonna talk about that in a minute, but first I want to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has the merchandising features that you need to make your products look their best online. All websites are optimized for mobile devices. Your content automatically adjusts so your site looks good anywhere. Grow and engage your audience with Squarespace's email campaigns. Create powerful email content that matches your website with your existing products, blog posts, and logo so your message is consistent and effective. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain.
So, these big updates to animation. This is really interesting because I like the way that animation used to work in Krita. Did I do a video on that? No, I did not do a video on that. I think I started one, but I got distracted. The animation system has been overhauled with both the user interface improvements and some new features, such as cloning frames and animating transforming masks. A lot of the tools that were in the animation dock are now directly in the timeline, which makes sense because that's where you're doing most of your work. So pinning layers has been made easier. Playback ranges automatically adapt as keyframes were added. They've redesigned the animation curves docker and generally they've improved the clarity and overall feel of the navigation. They've also added tweening. Well, kind of. This new feature that they've added here is called transform masks. Now, gonna be honest here, I have to dig a lot deeper into this feature. It's it's kind of confusing when you first use it. It's like a layer mask and it works in conjunction with the curve stalker. So it's such a different way of thinking about animation than what I'm used to in something like Adobe Animate, which I use quite a bit. For me, the big addition are clone frames. You can now reuse the exact same keyframe at multiple times throughout the animation. And they've also added an import video as an animation feature, which Cool. Krita now has a built-in storyboard editor. This is simple, but it's effective. Basically works like pages. You draw and draw and draw, you add a new page to your storyboard, new page comes up, you draw and draw and draw again. Super easy. There's also a place to add things like action descriptions to each of those storyboards. Also a place where you can add dialogue that's also happening at the same time in the scene. So it's pretty cool. Lastly, well, the last thing I'm gonna talk about here is the ability to export a movie from your art file. This works similarly to how Procreate's speed draw export feature works. So the app keeps a snapshot of every action you make while working on a drawing, and then it lets you export a movie of that speed draw when you're done. Handy. So that is Krita 5.0. This is a really big and impressive update. What are your favorite new features? Did I not mention them? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.